as you know, uh, I come from Australia. Uh, there's two Australians uh, here today. We've got uh, Brent Parkin here also. He's just joined Moodle this year. So you'll hear a bit of uh, Aussie accents around. And that's, that's what Australia looks like out in the middle. And it's something I've always loved to do, and Brent will back me up on this, is I love fires. I love making fires. I have a fireplace at home. I've always loved making fires, especially out in the bush under the stars. And you know the thing about making fires is that you need to build them slowly and they usually start very small. You start with some kindling, you add some larger bits of wood, you get bare grills to help you throw a few more pieces of wood on top. Uh, it gets a little larger and if, you're, if you work at it and put enough fuel into this, you can really make something that a lot of people can get around. All of you here are working on some sort of fire. Um, you all have an institution, uh, an LMS in the middle of a situation where you're trying to build uh, a lot of energy, you're trying to get uh, teaching and learning happening effectively uh, and as, as, as best as you can. And as you know, it's a, it's a process of building. It doesn't, you can't just throw in a piece of software and expect it to work. You need people to come on board, you need the training, you need everybody to come together and, and, and the content and the technology all to start working together. So the Moodle fire I started has now started a lot of other little fires all around the world and we have been growing consistently over the last 15 years uh, across the globe. We have about 81,000 registered sites at this point. Uh, the US is still the single country that has the most registered sites. Um, although the concentration is higher outside the US. These are just registered. Um, if you haven't registered your Moodle site, please do it. Um, in Europe, for example, Moodle's roughly two-thirds of higher ed, but it's also throughout K-12 and workplace and other sectors as well. In this is a recent graph. Uh, this is quite incomplete data, but the orange bar gives you an idea of Moodle usage around Europe, in Latin America, in North America, and Oceania, which is Australia and all the uh, things around it. Um, and that leads to a lot of responsibility for this project. Moodle is underlying uh, millions and millions of students' experience. So, what's new in this project that we're all kind of, we're all part of here? Well, I want to talk about, this is what's new, it's not that new. Um, the world right now is in a very interesting place. We have a lot of big problems going on. Um, there's massive, increasing inequality going on. There's huge economic <coughs> strife happening around the world. There is food and water security. There's, there's a refugee crisis. We have 65 million people just traveling without homes right now, without countries. We have climate change. Uh, we have data privacy, ownership of data, and, and who controls our data? Who owns it? Data is the new oil, you hear some people say, right? Automation. More and more jobs are being automated out of existence and people are struggling to live on the minimum wage. I, I heard on the radio here in New Orleans discussing the minimum wage in these parts. $7.20 currently, something. Um, so what happens in a future when most of the, the jobs we have now don't exist anymore? Healthcare quality, that's pretty topical. Uh, education quality, obviously something we're all concerned with. Now, all, these are just some, there's more, these are some of the UN's sustainable goals, that, the main issues they think need to be worked on. And these are big, big problems that we all need to work on. Education, I would argue, is underneath all of them. The education of the citizens who vote for politicians, the education of the politicians, the um, uh, all of us, uh, we all need to contribute. These problems are so large that there's no one government or one uh, company or one person who can really make a difference here. It's something that we need to do as a species on the planet and we need to do that through education. There's no other way. 
just to take one of those, um, inequality. Uh, right now, private wealth, so the, the people who have a, a lot of money, the very many billions of dollars for, for a person or a family, uh, their, their wealth is growing faster than the economy. So think about that. The economy, which is all of us, the percentage of it that is in the hands of a few people is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like a runaway train. Uh, last year, uh, something like 120 people in the world, their wealth was equal to the bottom 50%. At the beginning of this year, that was down to eight people. Last month, five people. So this is a very interesting situation. If you take that to its logical extreme, we're basically all going to be working for one person <laughs> in the future. It's kind of an interesting thought. Um, that ties in with how technology is done these days. The Silicon Valley model of technology, you look at all the excitement of the, the apps, the, the, the stuff that gets built uh, that we're using, the, and in education you often see uh, new products, they're proposed as the replacements to, re to fix education's woes because the teachers aren't cutting it, so here's a new app that's going to uh, reach students better. Um, a lot of these are powered by venture capital. And the venture capital, if you trace where it comes from, eventually comes from the very, very rich. The, the model that the money is given to these companies under and holds them under is this, uh, you know, the infinite growth model, right? So maximizing profit. It's all about profit. You get the minimum number of people working to do that job to get to the maximum number of people and maximize the profits. There's a situation, though, with that model. Right now, just for example, the US has 5% of the population, but with a profit-based model, is using 30% of the world's resources, has 25% of the world's wealth. So it's very well to say, oh, this is you know, the, 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 how things should work, it's very successful, but the whole world simply cannot do the same thing because there's not enough world to go around. There's not enough resources in the world to have the same kind of funding models for, for companies for technology, right? So the, in, in general, that kind of model has caused some of those big problems. That's, you know, you've got big companies like Monsanto or whatever, uh, just using huge portions of Africa, of you know, they're just spreading around the world and making profits off it. And the language of the companies that have that kind of funding, have that kind of model, they're talking about disruption, they're talking about re replacing what exists, about competing. They say educators can't do the job, they're not doing very well, so we're going to replace them. And that doesn't work for me, I don't think it works for anyone here. It doesn't work for the whole BB World Conference either. Um, in that sense, you know, we're, we're in the same, the same ballpark. Because um, uh, the LMSs, the education providers that we are, we're about supporting what exists. We're about nurturing education. We're about improving what's there. And so that's um, a very uh, core thing to the Moodle project, and we share that with all of the other open initiatives that are around. The word open is a beautiful one, and you'll see there's so many uh, uh, people are working on open education resources, open knowledge, open research, open standards, uh, open business, open government, um, uh, open data, all these things. So we're now... Uh, Moodle is part of that with being open source. We're a very open, transparent project. We are moving, as you'll see, to be more involved with this whole movement. And that's really uh, one big direction for us. And so I come back to educators. Uh, and these are uh, some things that I really strongly believe in the kind of guiding decisions that we're making in the Moodle project is that if. Uh, that ideally, I think we would all want the very best school for our children to be the one down the road, right? Ideally, if the one that was near you was the best school for your kids, wouldn't that be great? They could walk to school, perfect. That's kind of 
pretty simple way of looking at it, but that's the sort of thing they say in Finland. They just say, let's make education so great everywhere that you don't have to send your kids across the country to get a good education. Um, that comes if you respect teaching as a profession. If teaching is not a low-paid job that you have to work on weekends, where you have to buy your own pencils to give to students, where all that sort of rubbish. Um, if teaching was on a level of, of doctors and lawyers and scientists, as it is in some countries, and you can see how it works when it is, then if teachers have the resources, the respect, then the education works. If they have the, the ability to use decades of experience, uh, I, I, I know it's very, we can't compare education systems directly, but in, in Australia, um, it's kind of unusual to have teachers who stick with it for 10, 20, 30 years. They have to be really committed, right? Because they're not being paid much, they're being mistreated. And usually, you know, most teachers are quite young. They come out of school, they do it for a few years, and then they find some better opportunity somewhere else, and they become ex-teachers. Maybe many of you are that. Who, who here is an ex-teacher, actually? <laughs> We've got, okay, about a third of you, maybe. So, um, I bet it would be great if uh, the person teaching my children and your children had been there for 20, 30 years, was really experienced, knew how to do their job, like, and, you know. And, and lastly, if you've got the time to be, and the resources to be a good teacher, you're able to think about cross-cultural collaboration, about communities, about these bigger problems. You know, what am I raising this generation for? What, what are the problems this generation has to face to fix all the problems that our generation created for them while we've been fixing our previous generation's problems? Um, so, there's my, there's my dump of, on you of uh, ideology, but that all leads to what is the mission of Moodle. And the mission of Moodle is to empower educators to improve our world. And that's what's on these T-shirts. Very, very focused on empowering educators. We are not about replacing educators, we're about empowering them. The vision, so what we strive for, is we want to make Moodle the best, most effective platform for learning. And we're not there yet. We will never get there. We will always be improving towards that goal. Um, but uh, it's already, we have a very good base to work from, that's for sure. And the values of, um, well, to start with Moodle HQ, so the company at the middle of Moodle, but for the whole project, we hope, and anyone who's using it, that we have these values of uh, education. We, we value, we, we treat education as a value. We treat every interaction as education. And we try and look at things that way. Openness, we try and be open, obviously. Uh, and we, that means open to uh, people who are having difficulty using technology, so accessibility, uh, open to other cultures, other languages, etc. My things are doing a lot of beeping right now. Uh, respect. So we, you, you won't find people from Moodle uh, uh, talking about competition with other platforms. Uh, we don't bag competitors or do things like that. That's just there's no point, right? If, if what I care about is do their, does the mission of the other groups align with ours? If so, great. We're all on the same page, right? It doesn't matter if we're working on different projects. Um, integrity, being ethical, and innovation. We, we have a lot of room for innovation. As an open source project, a lot of people are building things, a lot of you are building things on top of Moodle and innovating and doing great stuff. What I want to focus on is how we get a lot more of that innovation working together so that we are uh, pushing forward faster. So, let me tell you what we're doing, and this is some new stuff. Um, one of the things we're doing, we're based in Perth, Australia, Western Australia, which is right on the edge of the internet. <laughs> we're moving a bit more to where the action is. We actually have uh, some people working for Moodle HQ in Barcelona already. But we're going to make that more formal as a, a proper office uh, uh, and get a lot more people there. Uh, so there'll be a base in Europe. Europe is a very interesting place for Moodle. There's huge support for Moodle there and uh, a lot of people doing really interesting things and we want to get closer with that. 
So we're also la launching a Moodle Foundation. This will be a non-profit uh, that's based um, in Europe, probably in Brussels. And the purpose of those two things is so we get more involvement with some of the initiatives that are happening in e-learning in Europe. Uh, they are spending um, billions of uh, euros on innovation research projects. Um, a lot of people are getting these grants and they use Moodle <laughs> for these things and um, those projects happen for a while and then they kind of disappear and it's such a waste of public money. So uh, what I see our role is getting much more involved in these larger grants, these larger research initiatives that are going on and making sure that we work on things that go into Moodle core that everyone can benefit um, and just getting us all working together. So the job of the foundation will be to link together all these people and get us all working together on those things. So a lot of research partnerships and business development, uh, networking with other open initiatives and uh, projects. Um, and lastly, uh, we're building a lot of new products and platforms uh, as well. And that's what I want to go through now, um, some of those. <coughs> so there's seven I want to talk about. Um, now you probably know some of these already if you've been around Moodle for a while, but I want to tell you where we're going with them and what the plans are. Um, some of them are brand new. So firstly, Moodle itself, Moodle Core. Um, I want to rename this to be Moodle Server, and I'll explain why later. But um, So the Moodle that you download, the piece of software that runs uh, and is your website, it is this piece of software that, that sits among these things. It's joining together administration, users, groups, roles, departments, courses, competencies, and has APIs, so uh, programming interfaces to join with other things. Is anybody here not using Moodle yet, that doesn't use Moodle, it's kind of new to you? Anybody? One person. All right, welcome. So that's what Moodle does, basically. Um, so it's a core platform that has plugins. The plugins connect to other systems. And then that whole thing you access via uh, clients. So you might use a desktop or a laptop, you might use a mobile device or a tablet. In the future you'll be using VR and AR glasses uh, and voice interfaces. We've actually already started building some interesting voice interfaces to Moodle. It doesn't really matter how you're accessing it and it doesn't really matter the, the back end, that, that back end is not going to change. It doesn't need to change uh, in, in, in what it does basically because the things it does are so generic. They just, if you're going to have a learning organisation, if you're going to have a school or a university and, and call it a learning organisation and if it's going to have courses of some kind, then it's going to have these kind of structures and do those sorts of things. It's all about how you link with other stuff and how you access it. So individual courses are just sequences of activities or resources. That, that would be the same if, if the year was 2040 and you've put on your AR glasses uh, and you had some, something you had to learn, some journey. You know, you're going to get there via a series of, of experiences. So that's not going to change. But bringing the focus back down to uh, current, what, what we're currently doing, very new stuff, so very recent and, and uh, uh, focused to today. We have Moodle 3.3 just released. Um, some of the things we added uh, are these. Um, there was a big focus on the office integrations. Uh, there's been a lot of different uh, integrations written in the past. We've tried to learn from all those and bring it down to a standard integration in Moodle that works with uh, Google Apps, that works with Microsoft Office, that will soon work with open source solutions like Nextcloud um, and others. But so the idea is uh, there's a few parts to it. One is you can now log into Moodle using uh, OAuth 2. Uh, it's built in. You don't, have to, you don't need any extra plugins now, it's built in. It's, uh, 
This, is, this site is configured for Google and Microsoft to log in with those accounts, but you can use anything. You can set up, if you have an authentication source on your institution, you can now very easily make OAuth 2, uh, using that standard, um, make that the authentication source for your Moodle. Um, and once you're in, then those documents can be embedded inside Moodle in different places. Students can submit them as assignments. And when they do, Moodle takes ownership of that file and it controls the access to the file using the Moodle workflow. So once a, if a student has submitted a, a document uh, into an assignment, once the due date has passed, you don't want the student changing that anymore, right? So it takes away right access from the student. Now the teacher has right access. The teacher can scribble all over it if they want to and uh, do their grading and then hand it back. And no matter what the workflow, if you have multiple markers in, in assignment, it, all that is handled. So the, the point of the integration is to make the alignment between Moodle's workflow um, and the back end of documents very close. Now it does depend on the plugin writers uh, handling this, but they can do it at least in a common way, and this can work across Google, across Microsoft, across Nextcloud, etc. So um, that was a big step forward for us. We're still fleshing this out with more and more detail, but the overall uh, principle is quite, quite clear, and it works quite well already. Uh, the second big thing in 3.3 was the new dashboard, uh, which is the first thing you see on the uh, when you log in, you see a, a block, and this is showing your things that are coming up for you in your courses. So it's bringing together that information onto one page. We had something, course overview before, which was pretty lame, and most people uh, did other things. That was always meant to just be a, a first attempt, and we were hoping a lot of people would make new dashboards. Um, and, and a lot of people did, but... Uh, we never got anything into core until now. So now we have, thanks to the Moodle Users Association who defined and funded that, uh, we now have one in core. What I just showed you there is not actually a screenshot. This is another view of the same dashboard. Uh, these are actually mock-ups which look almost exactly like the final screens. And that's an approach we're taking now in core development. They were actually getting user experience design happening first. We go through a lot of testing, and you'll, you might start seeing on Moodle.org a lot more requests for involvement of user testing and research. And we're trying to get the interfaces designed first, so everyone agrees, yeah, okay, that's what we're building, and then we give it to developers. Now, that's, what, that's how most software should be built. That's not how Moodle used to be built. Uh, usually it was developers just get started, and you have quite cranky-looking interfaces. And um, there's a session at the end of the day talking about user experience, uh, which uh, I hope you'll, you can come to. Um, we're going to talk a lot more about all of that stuff. But this dashboard uh, is a really good step forward. Uh, it's already had improvements since 3.3 in 3.31 and 3.32, so it's, uh, it's really taking a good step forward. And uh, the last sort of highlight I want to point out from the last release was this one, um, Project Inspire, which is... Uh, actually now being included into Moodle 3.4 as a core feature, and in core, we just, it's just called Analytics. So this is Moodle's native analytics solution. Now this uh, slide is a little complex, but um, what we've tried to build here, and there's a session, what time is your session about this? Two o'clock this afternoon if you want to find out more about this. What we've tried to build, though, is a, a platform for analytics. There's, there's so many different things you can do. There's so many different ways to analyze what's going on and draw inspiration from that, which is why it's called Project Inspire. Uh, we've tried to build a generic framework where you can come up with different models and uh, uh, that researchers can build new ways of looking at the data and distribute them as plugins and configuration, and then other people can use that in their Moodles. So we're, we're trying to build a bed of innovation and research where we can all be experimenting with, res with analytics and building, and, and building the system up and up further and further. Um, it's got in there a little artificial intelligence brain, so machine learning, and 
It's all about training that brain. So one aspect that's quite current is we are asking people to donate their data sets, entire Moodle data sets. If you've been running Moodle for 10 years, we would love to have the lot. Um, because we're, gonna, we're putting this data through this training of the machine learning heart of this so that it starts becoming aware of uh, how certain actions result, uh, relate to results. So when do students fail, for example, is an obvious one. But there are lots more subtle things we can do as well. So um, if you're interested, please come to Elizabeth's talk too. Um, you, you guys at the back, there are chairs <coughs> around, I think. Uh, so f feel free to come on through if you want to sit down. Sit down the front here this time. I won't mind. Uh, 3.4 is what we're working on now. We're very busy on this. And uh, we have made a decision to not do any new features. Uh, just focus on usability. And we might even do this again for 3.5. Uh, as you probably know in Moodle, often these new features come out and they sound great and they get implemented for one module or a couple and they don't sort of make it to the other ones. Um, so there's a bit of technical debt we need to do to just f improve usability across the board. Um, there's also some areas of Moodle that have needed some work for a long time and some of them are, for example, the, the calendar, um, so adding drag and drop, things like that on the calendar. Uh, combining the participants page with the enrollments page, which is probably the worst, most horrible part of Moodle, and I just curse every time I see it, like for the last five years. I'm so finally making effort to get that fixed. Um, and there's a number of other smaller areas getting shortlisted. And we're working on this over the next few months. Uh, for example, there's some little things like, you know, forum emails. When, if they have attachments, make sure the attachments, uh, the images, in the post appear in the post of the email that you get. You know, it's little things. <laughs> little things that annoy you uh, and me for a long time. Usability is really our main focus. Moodle has so many features. Moodle has more features than anything else out there. Uh, we're not lacking for features. It's really the usability of them and making them discoverable and making them consistent. Um, so simplifying the use of Moodle is a big focus. I hope after this afternoon session that we get a good, um, uh, we get your opinion actually on things that you think we should be focusing on. Uh, more standards, better integrations, uh, cleaning up legacy code, that's more for developers, so when developers come to Moodle they're not con confronted with a lot of different strata of aged software, well, finely aged software. Um, but they come and find a quite clean API to work with, which makes it easier for them to write new program, new plugins and things like that. Um, one important feature is a Moodle site copy, so the ability to copy um, from a Moodle, one Moodle site to another one, like a whole site. Just so you can go, I want to send this over there. Currently that's really hard to do. It's a long process, so people are nodding here because you probably did it recently. but. Um, for example, it would be good if you if you got a little site and you want to push it to Moodle Cloud, you could just go boop, now it's in Moodle Cloud. Or you start on Moodle Cloud and it gets too big, so you go, oh, I want to now move it to a Moodle partner. You go boop, just transfer it over there. So you're just copying whole Moodle sites around. Uh, sector, it might it may or may not do the boop noise. I'm, I can't guarantee the noise. <laughs> the uh, Sector-specific improvements, we're working on, you know, really focusing on things for K-12, for universities, for workplaces, um, and there are specific things. Uh, Analytics-driven user assistance, I already talked about, that's the focus as we go forwards. And, and lastly, um, VR and AR, while, you know, we're not going to be spending a lot of resources on it now because we have a lot of basic things to do, but in a couple of years, Something like this sized, connected to a smartphone, is going to be pretty common. You know, and I would love it in three, four years, maybe, if I could say, OK, everyone just put your glasses on now because I'm going to do some magic stuff here and start conjuring digital objects on the stage, which we can all see, right? Or we start interacting with. And that's 
you know, if you've, who here has played with VR in some way? Okay, about half of you. Who here has played with VR with controllers, where you had your hands in there? Okay, fewer. Now, if you, the rest of you, I really recommend you get your hands on like an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift with controllers. But once you get your hands in there, you really see the potential because you're literally picking up and objects and you're moving around in a big space and you're doing stuff. And when you throw multi-user uh, apps into the mix where you're, op you're working with other people and you're both manipulating things, that way, that's when it gets amazing. It's really very close. But I do not see Moodle as a big 3D object in this space. What Moodle needs to do is interact with these apps. So as a teacher, you'll probably say, you'll, you'll have an, uh, an activity for a class. I might say to all of you, OK, I want you all to go through this simulation. And you have to fire up the, this app. So you may be in Moodle, there, you, you press a button, it launches the app. You're now in the space doing the simulation. Maybe you're, I don't know, fixing a broken nuclear power plant. You know, something you can't do in the real world. Then the, the app probably has some results. There'll be assessment, some automatic, something's going to happen in that app. Where does the assessment go to? Well, it's going to get back to Moodle, right? So the, we need standards to push that stuff back into the grade book in Moodle. And also, the teacher, when looking at all the students, can say who did it, who didn't do it, and click to see a recording of a student doing one of those experiences. So then maybe you want to do further assessment to actually, you know, you go click observe, it appears in your glasses and now suddenly you're, you're, you're here, you can see the student there, you can see the, the desk there, you can see what they're doing and you can assess them and do further comments or feedback into Moodle. So Moodle's that kind of launching platform and the gathering of the results. So, you know, I'm not saying we're all going to be lawnmower man in Moodle. But I, it, this, you can see how this will work, right? It's just an extension of the content we have now with LTI and stuff like that. Moodle Mobile, I'm going to speed up now. Uh, if you haven't seen the Moodle Mobile app lately, please take a look. It has come a long way in the last year. It's uh, really a very attractive way to use Moodle now. And this shows development over the past few releases, since Moodle 2.4. As of Moodle 3.4, we will hit 100% of Moodle's core features all working in the Moodle mobile app. So we just got the, we've just got the workshop module to go. Um, and, then, and then we work on third-party plugins and things like that. But the, the core app now is, is becoming very, very capable. The uh, app can be skinned. So you can provide a CSS file and skin the app how you want. Um, we also, though, we provide a service now, we've started that since the beginning of this year, a branded Moodle mobile app. So if you want to have an app in, your, in the app stores with your name on it and your logo, your brand, so that students just launch your brand, and log straight into your site, uh, you can now get that. It costs about 3,000 bucks a year. It's chicken feed, really. Um, we maintain it. We'll update it every two months, so it's always going to have the latest features. And um, please just come to Moodle.com and you can uh, get one of those. We already have uh, quite a few already, and uh, we're, we're getting into a, a good rhythm with it. So. Um, this is something that we can do, uh, something that's a good value to you, something that, that's not too hard for us to do, and it does help fund the Moodle project. So um, there's three good reasons for you. Um, this is coming soon on this slide, but actually Moodle Desktop is now released. So we have a, a desktop version of the app designed for laptops uh, and uh, uh, desktop computers. Um, it's out on Windows. The Mac and Linux versions are about to drop as well. Uh, and so that has all the features of the app, which are that it works offline. You can download whole courses and have them offline. Uh, and plus it has a, this simplified interface. It's kind of nice and clean. It's good for very quickly accessing things. 
Uh, and like I said, 100% compatibility. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's also available. Currently, Moodle is uh, funded almost, almost entirely by Moodle partners. We have 89 worldwide. We've got uh, seven in the US. And uh, one of them is Blackboard, which is why we've tried this uh, BB World Moodle Rooms, uh, Moodle Moot here. Uh, and uh, they do the services. Now, this is not going to change. We, 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 uh, we're working with all our partners. Um, but we are internally uh, trying to make that better quality. We're always trying to improve the quality of partners, and we're trying to make sure that choosing Moodle partners is really the best solution for anyone who needs services. If you need any consulting or training or support, that, you, that Moodle partners is like a, a, the obvious option. Moodle Cloud. So we launched this uh, just about two years ago. We have 20, actually 22,000 active sites, Moodle sites running there, uh, all over the world. It's uh, extremely uh, active. Um, there's a number of packages. One of them is called Moodle for School. That's an example of one of, that's my test site on Moodle for School. That's, it has different themes than the standard ones out of the box. Uh, ninth grade beard curling is a very nice course if you want to take that. As, as well as expert farnarkling. That's an Australian word. You'll have to Google that. Um, and, and this is low-end commodity Moodle sites. So if you just need a Moodle site in a hurry, uh, you can get a free one. Just go click, use your phone, and you just get it. So even just for testing, or if you want to play with the latest version of Moodle and test some stuff, very welcome. Come and get a free site. Go for it. Uh, if you have very small needs, um, for a class or two, then there's uh, paid plans there as well. Um, but this is really helping us learn about Moodle and how people are using it. We've started to collect statistics for our user, user research on what features are being used, what features are not being used, how they're being used. And this is a, a way for us to learn about uh, how people are using Moodle too. Um, we have plans to make it uh, even easier. Um, we have, we're improve, improving the onboarding, we're improving the integrations with other systems so you can add features to your Moodle. Just, just click and you get it. And, um, and as I mentioned before, with a site copy, that you'll be able to upload your site into Moodle Cloud or out of Moodle Cloud and just sort of use it as a, a place to do things. Now, this one is new. Moodle training. We've always had Moodle training, and most of the partners do Moodle training. Um, we have a, a MOOC that we run uh, every twice a year. One just finished. It's usually in July and January. The, uh, um, that's just a four-week introduction. It's very small. And however, it is really well used. You know, most MOOCs, when you see the statistics, they start off with big numbers at the beginning, and then by the end of the course, you've got three percent of people left. But this one's pretty consistent. Like People stay right through it. It's really great to see that retention. Um, and that's at learn.moodle.net if you're interested in taking that. Or you've got teachers and you wanted to do a quick four-week course, we, we will always have these, uh, these MOOCs. But what we're building now, and we have a whole team of uh, five people who are working on this, our education team, uh, led by Tom Murdoch, who's sitting over there, uh, who's joined Moodle this year again. Uh, some of you may know Tom as the founder of Moodle Rooms uh, some years ago, uh, and an all-round good guy. Talk to him, grab him if you're here, it's a good chance. Um, and you may want to ask him about this. So the, what, the, what the guys are building here is a full curriculum of learning Moodle from the beginning to being very, very advanced. And it's not just here's a feature, there's a feature. It's about how to teach online, right? The, the pedagogy, the patterns, the things that work, the things that don't work. Um, so it's a bit like a degree. It's got a number of modules, and you can build towards a certification. If you want a certification, you can get one as well. So that will replace the old MCCC certification that we had um, as soon as it's ready. Uh, there are some sessions on this over the next two days, so I encourage you, if you're interested, go to those. And we're, we're looking for more feedback um, in the early stages to improve that. 
there are some universities who have already put their hand up and said, when this is ready, we want to make it part of our online education degrees. So as part of a master's of education. And so if you're interested in that too, you know, uh, I think here we, we have a chance to build a curriculum that really teaches people how to teach online using an open source product. It's not, not teaching you to use a commercial proprietary thing. And this is something that's used around the world. It's open source. So it makes a lot of sense to be a, a standard curriculum. Number six, uh, our Moodle Academy. Now we've had a, uh, I mentioned one MOOC. We have built a prototype of a system for running MOOCs in general. Um, it's still just a prototype. Uh, we've been doing some testing with it. We're going to uh, spend some more time on it now. We've learned some things. But what this is, is it's similar to Coursera or FutureLearn or edX or all those sorts of things, but using Moodle. Right? So you can take your Moodle course, copy it onto this platform, and use a more MOOC-focused, a more large-scale focused format. So it's, it's going to be like a course hosting system, um, but a Moodle-based a Moodle, uh, one. Um, there's no, I can't give you a timeline for when this will be more available, uh, but it's something we're, we're working on soon, and it's one of our major projects going forward. But um, uh, I'd be really excited to see this up and running uh, and available to everybody. The one, one reason for it being an external system to your own is that you probably don't want to invite half a million students to come into your IT systems and get enrolments and accounts on your own university systems. You want to get, this is a sort of a marketing thing, right? You, you want to have it out there and say, hey, look, we, we offer good stuff. Here's a free course for you or a cheap course. Uh, if you like it, come and enroll in our main institution. From a student point of view, they'll have courses from lots of institutions to look at and they get that kind of full catalogue. So, um, yeah, that's, that's something we're really focused on right now and uh, as well. Now, last one, this is a big one. This is really, really important to me, uh, is the Moodle community and marketplace. So, most of you who know Moodle, you know Moodle.org. This is a Moodle site. This is actually the second Moodle site. Actually, sorry, it's the third Moodle site in the world, uh, which has been running continuously since uh, 2001 and has just been upgraded the whole time. <laughs> Every time Moodle gets an uh, upgrade, it's been upgraded. So this is, um, it is the oldest running Moodle site. The other two are no longer functional. They were, one was the one I, I was building, prototyping Moodle with and building it with real students at a university. And the second one was my PhD thesis, which was a Moodle site. So can you imagine writing a thesis which is about software that you're, uh, that, that you're actually literally writing and is part of the thesis? I got distracted a lot when I was doing that. You can imagine. I was like, oh, if I had something uh, to, re to do a search and replace uh, on text, so, you know, my bibliography references could automatically link to something and say, so, oh, yeah, I'll write a glossary module, right? So then that's how the glossary module got started. It was to do my references in my thesis. So this is the third site. Um, now, it's very big. It's very old. Um, it's been good to use Moodle as the community site. Um, but I think we're getting past that stage. It's not effective so much anymore. Um, the courses on there are very large. We have Moodle in English which has every, most things, and then there's, all, there's about 20 or 30 other language-based courses. It's, it's messy. And, you know, we're using, a, we're using Moodle to do this. Um, it's not the perfect platform. Uh, another thing in the community that exists now is the Moodle Users Association, which I encourage you to join. And this is uh, a, a club, really, for members to contribute to buying new features in Moodle. Uh, Moodle.net is our open education resources. Um, it started about six, seven years ago and has had precious little attention since. Uh, but it's, there is a blocking module you may not have seen called the Community Block, and it lets you publish your courses into here, and you can download courses from here. Um, 
we've never really made it a big deal, so it never really got a lot of traction, um, only because we didn't, we didn't really integrate it properly. Um, and we also have Moodle plugins database, which has 1,300 plus plugins, nearly 800 developers, and these are, there's a lot of action going on here. This is really Moodle, is really a learning operating system where you install uh, plugins and things on top. It's got a new interface recently. Uh, it's much easier to find things and rate things. And uh, we have that. But what I think we need to do is bring all of those last four things kind of together in a new system. And this would be a community site that is more a professional development space. So if you're an educator and you're, you can imagine you're looking at your empty course, you've just started on an empty course, what do I do now? So assuming you, um, you've maybe have done some Moodle training, how do you find that Moodle training? Well, on the side of your course is the Moodle community. It's a little tab, you can go straight into it from your course. So in there, that's where you find your Moodle training, so you can learn how to use Moodle. And even if you've done that, you'll find people to be with. So if you're teaching, uh, I don't know, American history in Spanish, right, somebody must be doing that. It's pretty niche. Um, you want to hang out with people who are doing the same thing in the same language, right? So. Um, you set on your profile, your identity, the sorts of things you're interested in, and you, you, you find that group. And you now have a feed of people talking about that stuff. You also find resources related to your particular subject. So this community site will be connected to a lot of OER um, platforms, and it's a one-stop one shop to kind of start finding resources that you might need, and then you drag and drop them straight into your Moodle site. Right? So you, once you hook in, you have this professional development resource sitting on the side. You learn how to use Moodle, how to teach with Moodle. You get all the resources. And this is how we empower educators. This is like directly on the mission. But we need to work on this together and build this thing. Um, we have a number of shortcuts to get there, a number of systems and things and, and resources and uh, initiatives. I'm talking with a lot of people right now. Um, one of them is about your reputation. How do you know the reputation of people? If you look at LinkedIn, for example, you get asked to you know, evaluate, does this person know how to do that? Well, it's kind of very light. You don't really, you can lie a lot in LinkedIn. Uh, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, you find a big massive lie I've put de deliberately right in my profile, um, which a lot of people don't realize is a lie. But, um, it says I'm the founder of LinkedIn on my, on my profile. Um, there is ways around that, and I'm talking with some people who are really involved in, in open badges, looking at the next generation of open badges, which is uh, a much more peer-to-peer -peer system, similar to that, but actually way to, so you have like a network of trust, and you can actually start finding things that you can trust on the internet, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so it's about bringing all this stuff together into a system that's open to everybody. Um, and the, the last bit, bit I want to mention is about the marketplace angle. Just because we believe in openness does not, mean, does not mean I believe in everybody working for free. Far from it. If you do work, you should be paid for it. So in this is a model that we can build resources and pay educators to do it. So it's like a Kickstarter kind of a thing, crowdfunding, where Imagine that group of resource, uh, teachers I talked about before. They go, look, there is no content for this. There's no open Moodle course for this subject. And someone says, well, I built one a couple of times. I've done it before, but I can't release it because it's at my school and you know, I, it's, it's owned by them. But I'm very happy to build an open, education, an open one for everybody to share. It's going to cost $10,000 because I'm going to work for weekends for the next three months. And right? And they go, this is, this is what I'm going to do. Now, you know from their reputation that they can do it. And you know, because of their interactions on the community, that you can trust them. So everyone goes, yes, I'll, I'll chip in 100 bucks, I'll put in $10 or whatever it is. And they pay for it. And when the thing's built, everyone has access to it. 
and then you can take it and you can tweak it, make it your own, you know, fork it if you like. And it's this process, and, and we need to have, uh, I think this country of all countries understands that process of tipping and, and uh, uh, getting things done this way. Um, I think it's going to really work. And I think we have the best chance with Moodle to make it work because this thing is going to be linked to every Moodle site in the world. So that's the vision there. Now, this is coming. We, we're, we're, we're working on it. I can't say when, but uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. So we have a lot to do to do those things um, and a lot of work, a lot of plans. I, I must say I'm more excited about the Moodle project now than I've ever been, like in 15 years. I'm so into making these things happen right now. Um, but we do need help. Um, here's how you can help, incidentally. So get a branded Moodle app. I'm selling it now. I'm actually literally selling this thing right now. So get one. Just get, who has got one? Anyone here has got one? Anyone? Right, no one. So look at that. Look how many new apps are coming down the, down the next couple of weeks. Um, join the Moodle Users Association. So the Moodle Users Association, uh, who's here? Who's in the MUA here? Michael? Okay, Tanya, Tanya, uh, well, a couple of people there I can see. Good, great, Marty. So um, this, the association, you, you pay memberships. You can go from $100 up to $10,000. That's Australian. So let's say $70 to $7,000. And uh, that money goes into a pot. And there's a whole process for deciding and voting on work, things to do. And then the committee basically takes the top ones and the money and gives it to us and we build it in the next release. So um, we've already had some projects coming through there. I would like, love to see this to grow. I would love to see more, more coming through this. Who here does research? Do we have any researchers here? Anybody working in research? I know you do, Elizabeth, Tanya. Yeah, okay, a couple of people, the usual suspects. Um, even if you know researchers, if they were doing work in online education, encourage them to use Moodle. I've been lately going to a lot of non-Moodle conferences for a change, which is a challenge because we have something like 17 Moodle moots that we're involved with every year uh, around the world. And there are many more other ones as well. But I've been really making an effort to get out of the Moodle world and go to other things. And I went to some research conferences lately and there was one in uh, Greece, it was an IEEE conference, it's like all the engineers. 70% of the presentations were using Moodle in some way. Like they're saying, we have a hypothesis that this new technique will work, we implemented it in Moodle, we did the tests, here are the results, end of the paper. That's it. I'm like, you guys, you've done all that work, like just make it into a plug-in that we can share it with us or talk with us or you know, work with us. That's why we need a foundation to do, get more involved here. But There's so much work being done in Moodle out there and it's, it is really a, a platform where if you want to do research, you can make something and share it and imagine the data you can collect from all those sites that are out there. So we can really discover some truths about online education this way. So. Lastly, the analytics. If you're interested in analytics, take a look, talk to Elizabeth, and please get involved. Uh, there is a site for all our research activities, research.moodle.net, and there you'll find hundreds, thousands, millions of papers. What is it? Probably hundreds. <laughs> More than a thousand research papers in a, in a database. Um, so there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting stuff there. Do you need a Moodle site fast? Come to Moodle Cloud. Do you need consulting, hosting services? Go to a Moodle partner. Uh, actually, how many people here are using Moodle Rooms as a solution, actually? I'm quite interested, about half, or oh, maybe a third of you, okay. Um, I just was thinking that because BB World, I actually thought this would be all Blackboard customers here, but it's not, so um, that's cool. But uh, still, using a Moodle partner where you can, if, you know, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying if you have a choice, um, please you know, use that because it does help our project. 
If you've got any ideas, good ideas about anything I've just talked about, like just get in touch. Just think, hey, I'm going to get in touch. Now, it's, it's, it's uh, not easy, I realise. Um, but I've got my contact details in. Contact me. I can at least shuttle it to the right person. Um, if you're involved in grants, if you're best mates with Bill Gates or um, <laughs> something, uh, and there's a big grant using Moodle, just you know, maybe contact us, because maybe you could do it in a way that affects core, rather than there's a side project. Are you or your friends very wealthy and you, you want to feel proud by investing your money in something that truly helps the world? Then just call me direct. That's my actual phone number. Go for it. Um, you might not get through while I'm in the US because I have a different SIM card, but it'll, I'll get it eventually. So back to campfires and fires. So I know everyone's got a fire to build. We're building the Moodle fire. Um, I think we need to work together, get our fuel together. And that's the only way we can really make some change in the world. Um, I'm not proposing we burn down this beautiful green landscape. Just, just make it a nice place to live. Um, so thank you very, very much. And please get in touch. Thanks.